going to discuss why it is or how it is that people see new things, new art, new anything that they haven't seen before or that is not mapped on our brains. As uh, the poetess Hirschfield said, we have, we, in uh, her essay on, or a paragraph or two on uh, the poetry of seeing, she was saying that first we have to teach our brains not to see what is useful, but to see what is not useful. Not her exact words, but that's the meaning. As children were taught to see what is useful, we are, uh, our innocent vision is removed. Very young children see innocently and they paint innocently. Adults call it distorted, but it's actually the way they're seeing, uh, as often happens with certain primitive arts who have not been trained to see as we do. African art, for sure, and various other oceanic arts. Now, in order to see what uh, is not useful, it's a very difficult task because our brains are mapped to see what is useful. And when a new art comes out and you look at it, and I'll use my own for the moment as an example and some others, my breaking the light, highly abstract imagery, early Picasso when he was unknown, early Matisse when he was unknown, the abstract expressionist before Pollock became world famous, uh, Basquiat at the beginning, though he was quickly famous. Louise Bourgeois was in her 70s before they really understood what she was doing, one of the greatest. The abstract expressionists, they became a gigantic movement and everybody uh, admired them whether they could see them or not. And the reason I say that we don't see these things <coughs> that are new and all, all new art is, uh, in a sense, invisible in the way it'd be if somebody came up to you and said uh, in Korean, in Nepalese, in Burmese, in uh, New Guinea, any of those languages, Chinese or Japanese, and they started talking to you, you would just look at them blankly. You'd have no idea what they were talking about because you don't know the language. We imagine that we know the language of everything we see because we haven't been taught not to worry about, I mean not to imagine that, because most of what we see we understand. The moment new art comes along, at first we don't see it, we have to learn it. And as you know, learning new languages when you're very young is not so difficult. The uh, young people today will learn the new, ang new languages of digital art photography, some of which I'm doing breaking the light and other of my new portfolios on my website, www.harveylloyd.com. But you will see things that very often you won't recognize. I don't mean to demean anyone or to put anyone down, but it is quite clear to me that there are things I see that I have no idea what they are and it takes a while before I can appreciate them. There's music of the music concrete or of some of the great composer Messian or of Shostakovich, quartets. Uh, there's a lot of music that is very difficult. You have to listen to it many times. Late Beethoven quartets are the spiritual soul of the artist of Beethoven, pouring out in slow movements that will almost make you cry, as well as Mozart's G minor quintet and Schubert's quintet uh, uh, I also, I think, it's a G minor quintet. These things, these contain the uh, eloquent outpourings of the artist, but you may not recognize it at first. The same with art, though art affects you differently. Art is related to vision. Music is related to hearing. There's a large difference between them and the way we get them and accept them. Because as children, we're not so much turned around so we can only see what adults see and only hear what adults hear. I think children have an, uh, I think we have an advantage in music of being much more open to a lot of it, not all of it. Be uh, Bach's Art of the Fugue, Beethoven's uh, uh, grand, uh, grand uh, last movement of his uh, last uh, quartet, the uh, Grosse Fuga. Uh, Bach's Art of the Fugue, I think. I mean, all of these things take time and listening to. But we can do that much more easily than we can change our visual. 
uh, experience because we're not used to the, seeing anything that isn't useful. Music, we tend to move around. Some of us stick in various forms of rock, pop, hip hop, folk. Others uh, like ethnic music. Others like symphonic music, guitar music. There's all kinds, but you can approach most of them because you have very little preconditioning to see, to hear them in a certain way. With vision, it is a very difficult problem, and as I said, we must learn to see with poetry's eyes, meaning we have to teach our brains to see not what is useful, but what is there and what we can learn from. New art, new art, new art. Our life is about art. Art teaches us about life. Without, li without art, we are no different than cows grazing in the fields. We get plenty of food, but there's nothing going on in our empty skulls. I don't believe cows have much going on in their empty skulls. They may have as much as a lot of the human beings I've encountered. But in general, we un you know what I'm talking about. So that the purpose of this short essay is to say we must learn to see what we're unfamiliar with. And the only way to do it is to jump into it. Look at art you don't know that well. Louise Bourgeois, who's now considered one of the greatest artists in history, she only died a few years ago, about 93 years old. It wasn't until she was about 80 that people saw what she was doing, if you can imagine. Then they began, a modern museum exhibited her. She suddenly was becoming famous. Prior to that, she was somewhat known, but very little. You couldn't see the work. And even now, if you look at, I have just gotten three or four books of her work, because I have others and I'm very interested in her work because it's unique, it's by itself, it's not part of any movement just as Basquiat was not part of any movement at all and the abstract expressionists had their own movement, there were about 25 of them uh, but uh, the and of course Du Buffet very much of his own though there are a lot of painters who did somewhat primitive work that resembled his, but his was stood by itself. So that we have to confront art differently than we do sound. And we have to understand, we have to learn how to see it. It's very difficult to, anyone is gonna say, well, I see, I have two eyes, I can see. Henry Moore said, people think that they see, but they don't, it's an endless problem. He was explaining exactly that. He knew that early on with his now famous, world famous sculpture, one of the greatest of the 20th century, that people couldn't see it. And this is true of a lot of sculpture of the 20th century. At first, uh, Bourgeois being a great example, as she was a sculptress, as well as an artist and painter, and uh, some of her most immediately popular things were her gigantic spiders. They were 10 feet high. There were several of them in RCA, uh, at the RCA building. I was there and photographed them long ago. And you could understand them very easily. They were gigantic metal spiders, beautifully made with lots of detail, bronze, I believe, and uh, people were sitting under them and they understood them. But a lot of her work you don't understand at all. I can still look at a lot of it and say, what in hell was she doing there? Doesn't matter. I love her work because she blazed new trails and she was uh, an experimenter, and uh, it, her writings are extraordinary. They're very succinct. You'd half the time are not sure what she's saying because she is not explaining anything. She's telling the truth as she knows it, but it may not be your truth. So to get back to the beginning of this discourse, which I'm going to stop shortly, we must learn to see with poetry's eyes, which means... We have to train, we have to study, we have to work all of our lives to make our brains learn to see what is not useful. And in the art of photography, it's all going to happen now with the great changes that are occurring with digital photography and quantum effects and, all, and Eastern philosophy all playing a part. In about 1950, the great photographer Brassai said in his book Graffiti, magnificent book of the graffiti on the walls of Paris. I recommend it highly. Flammarion Press in uh, Paris. It's something any photographer should see that has aspirations to being an artist, especially with the new art, is that the uh, 
Photographers would have to learn to see with new eyes, he said. We'd have to learn to see differently. 